the last gas law for now, um, the individual gas law, I've got something else coming up um, later in the week, is Gay-Lussac. Um, he relates pressure and temperature. Gay-Lussac's law states that the pressure of a fixed mass of gas at constant volume varies directly with Kelvin temperature. So again, just uh, working out how to translate the law into a formula. So the pressure varies directly with temperature. Changing um, uh, proportionality to inequality, you introduce K, move all the variables to one side. And then of course, if we have P1 over T1 equals K and P2 over T2 equals K, therefore we have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And that is Gay-Lussac's law. Let's practice. The gas in an aerosol can is at a pressure of three ATM at 25 degrees C. Directions on the can warn the user not to keep the can in a place where the temperature exceeds 52 degrees C. What would the gas pressure in the can be at 52 degrees C? So we're given P1, which is three ATM. T1, which is 25 plus 273, because we have to change it to K, that's 298. And T2, which is 52, which is equal to 325 K. Our unknown is P2. So we rearrange the equation to solve for P2. So we get P1 T2 over T1. We plug in our numbers, we cut our units and we get 3.27 ATM. Okay, let's do some more. Before a trip from New York to Boston, the pressure in an automobile tire is 1.8 ATM at 20 degrees C. At the end of the trip, the pressure gauge, pressure gauge reads 1.9 ATM. What is the new Celsius temperature of the air inside the tire? So we have to be careful when the question asks for a specific unit. And I can actually relate this to why we should give a crap. Um, one of the things that I try to do, especially when you're learning online um, and you've got lots of work and you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, why do I have to do all this? Um, there is a very important reason why we need to learn about gas laws. And you see it a lot in Thailand actually, because of um, the big trucks that uh, deliver things like across the country. A lot of times you'll see, um, especially on the highways going from like, you know, Bangkok out or Bangkok in or from up country or down country or whatever, back into Bangkok and you see like chunks of tires on the side of the road, these big trucks often have their tires blow up because the temperature inside the tire rises to a point. And that goes back to, um, to Gay-Lussac's law measuring pressure and temperature. So as the temperature in the tire increases, um, mostly not just because it's hot here in Thailand, but also just because like of the friction from the road, and because they travel long distances. So the longer you travel, the hotter the tire gets. And then it gets to a point where the pressure builds up and the tire explodes. So you have to know basically like how long you can uh, drive and like what the pressure of your tires should be so that when you're traveling long distances, you don't uh, inflate your car tires or your truck tires too much so that it will explode. It also has a lot to do with the weight that it's carrying when they carry heavy loads, they have to deflate their tires for this exact reason. Anyway, um, the more you know. So we have, uh, we're gonna write out Gay-Lussac's law first, which is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And it's like, what is the new Celsius temperature? So the new temperature is T2. We have to rearrange the equation to solve for T2. So I'm basically just gonna cross multiply um, there, so then I get T2 equals that up there, that goes down, P2 T1 over P1. 
Yeah? Okay. So that's the equation we're working with. Um, I have to change my 20 degrees to K. So that's plus 273. That is equal to 293K. So I've got T1, um, T1, 293K. And my P2 at the end of the trip, 1.9 ATM. And my P1, which is 1.8. And I cut those and I get out my calculator. Do, 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 do. 1.9 times 293 divided by 1.8. And I get 309. I'm just going to cut that off as 309.277778. 309 is just fine. But that's K. But again, Make sure that you pay attention to the unit that the question is asking you for because they want it in Celsius. So I'm going to subtract 273 and because, oh no, I can do that in my head. That's six and 30. This is how I do quick mental math. Um, I'm going to separate it into two parts because nine minus three is easy and 30 minus 27 is easy. That's three, 36. Is that correct? That's correct. <sighs> Yay. Okay, next. I'm feeling a little slap happy today, so I apologize. At 120 degrees C, the pressure of a sample of nitrogen is 1.07 atm. What will the pressure be at 205 degrees C, assuming constant volume? So again, I've got P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. What will the pressure be? So I'm solving for P2. So I'm just going to throw T2 up on the other side. So I've got T2, P1 over T1 equals P2. I got to change my 120 and my 205 to K. So that's 273. That's 393K for T1. So 393K. And then 205, 273, that's 478. And P1 is 1.07 ATM. With my calculator. Yeah, four, whoop, 478 times 1.07 divided by 393, 1.3014249. 1.3. Am I correct? I am correct. Always and forever. All right, last one. I'm just going to go ahead and write. If you guys can skip this step of rearranging the equation and do that in your head, more power to you. But I am not that clever. I always have to start with the original figure out what I am solving for and then rearrange it that way. Um, blah, 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 at what Celsius temperature? So I'm solving for T2 again, so of course could be super complicated. Uh, put that up there, P1 goes down, T1 goes up. So T1, P2 over P1, yeah. Okay, now um, I gotta change 22 to 270, uh, sorry, to, to K. So that is 295, that's T1. P2, be careful with this as well, but P2 is 2.00 ATM and P1 is 1.20, to do, and calculator. And again, they want at what Celsius temperature, so I'm gonna have to convert it back. I get 48.3333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333333
over 73. Ugh, I don't want to do that in my head. 492 minus 273, 219. That's hot. That's damn hot. Wow. So again, let's, and I completely forgot to do this because I'm derpy today. Uh, double checking to make sure that the, um, what do you call it? The proportionality, like whatever's happening to temperature, you can look at what happens to pressure and vice versa to see if it makes sense based on the overall concept of the law. So uh, pressure and temperature have a direct proportionality, a direct, yeah, proportionality, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So if um, pressure increases, then temperature should increase. So temperature, sorry, pressure went from 1.2 to 2, and temperature went from 22 to 219. That seems like quite a big leap. I suppose it's possible. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, I'm correct. Last thing I wanted to show you, and I'm going to get out of here. Uh, stop share. Okay. I wanted to talk about this once I did all three gas laws. Um, and it's a little trick that my chemistry teacher showed us um, when I was in grade 10, because in America, we only do one science per year, but we do it every single day. So in grade 10, I had chemistry. Um, grade 11, I had physics. And then grade 12, I had AP bio. Uh, but anyway, here it is. So you put pressure, temperature, and volume in this order. And then I poked holes because when we want to compare two of the three variables, we have to keep the third one constant. So we started with Boyle's law, which measures pressure and volume. So I keep temperature constant. So what happens if I increase volume, pressure decreased, volume increase, pressure decreased. What happens if I increase pressure, whoop, pressure increase, volume decreased. Okay, Charles's law, volume and temperature, pressure is constant. If I increase temperature, I increase volume. If I decrease volume, decrease temperature. And finally, Gay-Lussac, measuring pressure and temperature. If temperature goes up, pressure goes up. If pressure goes down, temperature goes down. So just a neat little trick for these three gas laws.